Okay. You know, over this last week, AAU has been, been really demonized a lot in the press. So it's, it's the the negativity surrounding AAU is starting to build. Um, you know, and a lot of people feel like like AAU is part of the problem in 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 basketball. You know, what what can you say as a as a a leader of an AAU program to those who 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 may have those ideas that that AAU is a huge part of the problem in in, in sports. Uh, yeah, first we got to clearly define what AAU is and what it means in regards to each state. Uh, I take care of the state of Kentucky. Me and the other coaches, such as Ellis Miles, uh, such as Dion Lee, such as uh, Mike Scott. Um, we have a large amount of the kids here in the state of Kentucky. AAU, uh, traditionally, since the time that I've been in youth sports, is an insurance company that hosts events. And you can go to AAU sanctioned events. Once you pay for all your insurance and your memberships, you can go and participate in those events. In regards to AAU and what we do, the majority of the hardworking people in the game of basketball each day is we're into youth development. We're into building kids' character on and off the court, building their classroom work ethic on and off the court, and then getting on the court and using the game of basketball as a carrot to drive them to be great adults for our community. What Go Hard in the Paint and other organizations like Go Hard in the Paint, we are not AAU. We are youth organizations that help develop bas guys and women in the game of basketball. We take our teams to AAU events. I think some of the definition between AAU and youth sports and youth grassroots sports has kind of got confused and kind of got all lumped together. There's also another big difference. Youth organized sports, we're nonprofits for the most part of us. We go out and raise money. We do events to raise money to better help our kids. And most importantly, our parents step up to the plate and they go out and they either spend their hard earned working money or they fundraise in order for their child to play. The tennis shoe sponsored uh, teams, they're in a whole different league. That's a whole different world. And it's also a small percentage of the athletes to play this sport. In the state of Kentucky, we've had a pro basketball player about one every 10 to 12 years here. So there's not a lot of money being thrown around for potential pro players here. But what we do have here is we have a lot of knowledgeable basketball players that will play college basketball, and once they get to that college level, they'll have the opportunity to go farther down the line. So again, we're in youth grassroots development in the game of basketball and other sports. AAU is an organization that sells insurance and memberships and then they go and host events. So AAU has gotten a bad knock and someone from AAU, I know some good people at the AAU offices, they need to step up and speak for AAU. But in regards to what we do on the daily basis, every single day working with athletes, it's improving their character, it's improving their work ethic, and it's improving their classroom mentality, which helps us on the court. Well, what can you say to, to those who may feel that that um, playing non-high school basketball has contributed to a lot of players feeling like individuals? Um, it has led to a lot of individuality and not necessarily so much a team mentality that translate in high school um, translates to, the, to that game as well, to where players are out for themselves. Yeah, well, there, there, there's a simple recipe. I think in regards to that, uh, much like we spoke on earlier today in our uh, leadership class today, we have to continue to build student athletes as better leaders off the court. Then they will reckon, they will translate that and carry that over to the court uh, where we want our dominant players to be dominant, but we also want them to be dominant in the fact that they make others better. Um, again, travel basketball is needed in the spring and the summer to condition athletes' minds, to have them play against the best level of competition at their level. That could be Division Three, Division Two, or Division I. Um, and it's continuously playing the game that they love to keep them sharp for the winner. But all of that stuff can be fixed. It's a simple fix. 
give the power back to the high school coaches, allow us to our summer leagues and our summer games to be in a, in a recruiting stage for college coaches, and then you would deal with those college coaches. In my regards, I've been blessed and able to be a high school uh, coach and also an AAU director. So I'm able to run our AAU program the way a high school program would be ran so kids are getting what they need to to transform and translate everything that we're teaching them in both realms. Uh, as far as the selfishness, I think that's a home thing. Uh, if you have selfishness in you where it's all about you, someone in your inner circle should be telling you that eventually you will have to lean on teammates in a team sport. Okay, you know, with, with what, what's going on in uh, at the University of Louisville right now? You know, and, and people feeling as though players should be paid. You know, for the, you know, for bringing in the money that they bring in to those institutions. What is, what is your thoughts on that? Um, my, my thoughts on that are when they change the rules, then players will get paid. It's almost like high school coaching. When you come in as a freshman coach, you're not expecting to get paid, especially at the high school level, hundreds of thousands of dollars. You know that you're going to get a small paycheck for a lot of work. But you put in your sweat equity. And then eventually you build up to what you want to make and what you want to get from this game. Uh, as far as the athletes going in, there is a lot of money being made off athletes. I'm not saying that those athletes should be compensated. But athletes right now, you are, you're getting a full ride. Uh, in most cases, 140000 or better scholarship over four years. Uh, you eat better than the regular students. You have extra things that are provided for you for study uh, and for for body improvement. So you are getting a lot now. I think that there should be some type of work study program set up so that athletes can survive more uh, while they're in college, especially if uh, universities are going to benefit off jersey sales and different things that you will ultimately benefit off of if you were a professional. What do you think about the comment that, that AAU ball has, is largely marginalizing high school ball? You know, in that a lot of the players don't take high school ball serious, as serious as they used to. Um, and the fact that, that coaches now um, feel like they, AAU is where they need to come and watch players. Uh, again, wherever you put the resources and you put uh, the exposure, that's where kids are going to gravitate to. Uh, again, the high school game, uh, and again, I just talk about the state of Kentucky because I'm here 365 days. The high school game has, uh, they've started to do things now to bolster the high school game. Uh, this year at the, at the Sweet 16 tournament, the post-game interviews, some of the off-the-court activities that they had set up for the teams, they made the teams feel a lot a lot more big time, a lot more professional setting. Uh, AAU has the allure right now. You have the tennis shoe sponsor tournaments. You have other tournaments that are put on by either NBA players or, or other important people in the community. You have the socks at the table. You got the video cameras out. You got the rankings. There's so much allure around that sport. Um, there's nothing more sacred than high school basketball. At the end of the day, every great player play for their high school, represent it for their high school, and, and, and ultimately represent it for their community. There is no greater feeling than that. Uh, AAU is a much needed tool and is a much needed necessity because again, it allows you to sharpen your skills. One of the key tokens that we use around my school is, and, and, and around our AAU program, if I want to be an astronaut, I go to NASA, Florida. If I want to be a musician, I go to Nashville. If I want to be a basketball player, I go play AAU basketball because you're going to go out and see the best of the best. But when you take that, you take that back to your community. You take that back to your school. You take all of those things that you learn, all of those skills, those, those resources, the physical contact, you take it back to your high school and you make your high school team better. And as far as the respect of the, of the high school team and coaches, that starts at home. So at home, we should be talking respect and preaching respect for your coaches and the ones that's trying to make you better. You know, with, with you being in, in leadership of so many kids, you know, and it, it, kids have different motivations and, and reasons for why they do what they do. 
What can you say to a kid who who comes out and says, Coach, I need to get mine now. I need to, I, I want to be a, a quote unquote Brian Bowman, Bowen, who, who wants to get, you know, paid now or who wants to get, you know, do underhanded things, so to speak, or cut corners to, to get ahead. What can you say to those players who may have that type of, of, of mentality? Well, I'll, I'll say this, being a leader of so many different kids and then also, you know, having to adjust not only for the kids of right now, but the kids in the future and even the kids in the past, because we try to be even more thorough with our follow through kids that have graduated or we want to stay connected with them. What I can tell someone who wants to get it now is you're going to paint your own vision of what you want. But right now, let's let's fall in love with the process. Let's get paid off the process. And what I mean by getting paid off the process, getting paid from sweat equity, from putting in the work, from, from treating your body right, from being good to others, from working out, uh, from eating the right things, from having high character when nobody's looking. Get your benefit there. Then you will get paid and ultimately all the things that you want will come. I've had a chance to meet Brian Bourne. He's a great kid. It's unfortunate what happened to him. You know, the thing of, of it is, is in life, if there were no, if you were not given a second chance over mistakes, Coach Shula wouldn't be standing here right now in front of you as the head coach of Fern Creek High School and as director of Go Hard in the Paint and the director of D4G, Destined for Greatness. I wouldn't be here standing. So mistakes are to be made. Now it's about how do you handle that mistake? How do you bounce back from it? And let's see how Brian teaches others to better uh, to better help them not fall into those same mistakes. Uh, but for the kid that wants to get it right now, I would just try to set mentor with them. I wouldn't preach to them or wouldn't lecture to them. I would just talk to them just as just in general conversation and just understand and let them know there are no short corners to this game whatsoever. What's been the feedback from the kids who have have maybe commented on this situation? What are, what are they saying amongst themselves? Or what are they saying to you? Uh, well, you know, it's it's such a wild thing because, you know, we know things like that go on in basketball, and it's unfortunate for the people that were involved in it. Some of those people uh, I, was, I was friends with uh, and colleagues with just in our basketball networking world, so it's unfortunate uh, uh, what happened. But things happen, there's, and there's repercussions, and, and there's things that you have to go through. Now it's about the bounce back for them and how they repair uh, what they've done to better help other people. But as far as the kids are today, uh, I think they understand it. I mean, they understand that there was something done wrong. And uh, a lot of kids, if they take on the approach of, of knowing when they're doing something wrong instead of taking on, I didn't know I was doing it wrong and I'm just a kid, and, and they take on the approach of I know what I'm doing, uh, I shouldn't make this decision, then a lot of better things will happen. Um, my players, I talk to them avidly about things like that because I have six or seven recruitable athletes on my team this year, and we talk about those things. And they all know if you take any type of benefit before your amateur uh, career is over, you're going to get in trouble. And, and, and they know that. So um, they've, they've learned. We, we constantly teach them, but I think it is, it's, it's our job to be a community of teaching and knowledge. We have to constantly teach our kids and, and, and show them the right ways and understand, yes, it's hard, but let it be hard. Work harder, and when it's your time, the success will come. You know, for somebody like yourself who puts in so much work, and I do mean work, helping these kids, what, what is your motivation for that? What do you feel that you get out of doing this and when you look back and you see what you know your body of work quote unquote what can you say uh, about your motivation for why you why you continue to do what you do well i was a i was a only child uh raised uh by my mother and father both hard-working people um they worked a lot of they worked so much i didn't have a chance to go in uh to go to practices and and, and play for teams um so when I had that chance, I really, really took opportunity of it and really um, enjoyed it and learned from it. But after I left college, I made some uh, tough decisions in my life that sidetracked me. Uh, basketball gave me a, a chance to get back in and to get back in the game and get back on a positive note and working with children. 
And so now basketball saved my life. So for me, my motivation is basketball saved my life. It put me back on the right direction in order to find a route, in order to be successful, and, and to share my success with others, and to build them up. So that's my motivation. That's why the Lord Jesus put me on this earth. So what I try to do is to help other kids find out what it is that they have inside of them or their special gift so that they can go out and help others. And I just feel like... The more love that you show somebody, it spreads in that love, and that love spreads around. And our basketball community would be great. But once the basketball community is great, the basketball community can reach out to football, can reach out to baseball, and now we're encompassing everyone. So for me, I'm living a dream every single day. I'm blessed to be here. Basketball provides me to do what I want to do every single day, and I'm going to live it to the fullest. You know, last time we talked to you, uh, you were talking about your expansion plans with your program. Yes. You know, talk a little bit about that and how things are going and, uh, you know, maybe some of the things that you're working on. Things are going uh, great with that project. Uh, we're probably about three months away from breaking ground uh, on, on the new LSA expansion project. Um, we are starting to get phone calls every day about people that are interested in either investing or sponsoring the new facilities. Um, it's a great concept that's going to encompass a lot of different a, a lot of different sports. It's going to have a chance to put a lot of creative, professional, and and very very knowledgeable coaches in the same building working together and really uh, putting putting a blanket around these athletes, encompassing them with everything that they need to be successful on and off the court. There's going to be other things involved with it, with educational, professional development. Uh, that's also going to be neat. We're going to have a lot of things that. Uh, provide the parents to come in and get what they need. So expansion is going well uh, day by day. We're, 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 we're just out raising money, raising money, raising money, so that we can put this expansion project out here on the east end and, and have it for the whole community of Louisville. And it's going to be a state-of-the-art building that's going to be used by the city of Louisville, for the athletes in the city of Louisville, and I feel like it's going to be a great producing spot for students as well as athletes alone. And it's going to provide our GHITP culture really to shine over the community.